Hey everyone, a very warm welcome. This is Dr. Jyoti Bala. In this session, we are going to explain about RNA secondary structure. In my previous videos, I have already given you the overview and few of the important crucial tools which you can use for secondary structure RNA prediction. But here in this session, we will be specifically discussing about RNA Matthew Lab tool, which you can use for your DNA secondary structure prediction and also for your RNA secondary structure prediction. We will be showing you practical demo also. So let's get started. In my previous tutorial, we have already given you the ideas why we require RNA and DNA structure and what kind of tools you can use. Here we specifically uh, discussing about RNA Matthew Lab tool. This tool can be utilized for various secondary structure analysis, but specifically if you want to do the secondary structure prediction, you have to come to this page first and here there are different parameters and tools available here, but you have to use fold. So you just have to scroll down and in the drop down, you can use this fold. And from there, you can do the prediction of your DNA and RNA structures. You may use sequence massager if your project require DNA conversion to RNA because for uh, RNA Matthew, you can fold DNA also and RNA also. So depending on your project, if you have to convert DNA to RNA, you can use the sequence massager. I will be putting the URL of this and I have already made one tutorial. I request you to watch the sequence massager tutorial also. This will give you a overview about how to use this uh, tool also. So let's do some demo. I will be using few DNA and RNA samples and will do the secondary structure prediction by using those oligonucleotide by using RNA Matthew. So for secondary structure prediction, if you have to do secondary structure prediction of RNA, either sometime you have to convert DNA into RNA if your work requires such things. Otherwise, if you are having RNA oligos, in that case, you just have to provide RNA information. But if you are having DNA, then you, are, you have to convert DNA to RNA first and then you have to provide for secondary structure prediction. So in RNA Matthew, we have both the option for DNA secondary structure predictions and for RNA secondary structure prediction. You can use this uh, URL and come to this page first. Here we have multiple options, but right now we are using RNA structure for our secondary structure prediction and folding purpose. So you just have to go to fold. Here we have both the option for DNA and RNA and not only the secondary structure prediction they will do, they will also provide the free energy so we can get the idea about the thermodynamic and stability also. So we just have to go to fold and here you can provide either the sequence or maybe file also. So based on your uh, like availability, you can provide this thing. So right now I'm just typing the name of my samples. And if I have to do RNA folding, in that case, if I have DNA samples, which I need to convert into RNA, I can convert them by using any editing tool. So I have already mentioned and given you a detailed tutorial for sequence massager. I will put the link of that tutorial in the description section. So if anyone has missed watching that video, can also watch and uh, see the option what we can do, because this is very important for bioinformatics and biotechnological work. So day-to-day -day work, a uh, lot of options are here. You can convert DNA to RNA, invert it, complementary conversion and something like you can remove the numbers, uh, line feeds, white blank, uh, blank spaces and all these things which could hamper your further analysis. So these tasks we have to perform. You can do check out that video first. So for time being, we have to convert DNA if your project requires because sometime when we are working on RNA related project, we mostly 
save and secure these things in the form of DNA because most of the time you cannot store RNA for long-term storage. So what we do, we convert them into DNA, we store them in the plasmid. So in that sense, many a time, uh, if you are doing sequencing and all, so our actual information is an RNA, which we have stored in DNA plasmid. So DNA need to be converted to RNA for many projects. It is optional, depending on your project, you have to convert DNA to RNA. So DNA will be converted to RNA first. And these RNAs, if your project require, or else if you are having your own personalized RNA samples for the predictions of secondary structure, then you have to use that part. With that sequences, we have to provide this information, RNA sequences. So suppose this is my RNA haplomer. I just have to provide here. And in default setting, right now, if you are a beginner, you can use in the default setting. You just have to provide the email IDs it's also optional, but it's, it's always best to provide email optional if you are having multiple samples. And uh, then the link of result will be given to your email and you can download the files and results and store uh, the samples. So right now, if you are a beginner, you can use in the default setting. Otherwise, if you are working at like stability, and for therapeutic diagnostic purpose, then sometime your project also re uh, required to get the ideas about stability in terms of salt concentration, the thermal stability and all these things. In that scenario, you have to change the default setting, but in initial phases, you don't have to require. Like in my cases, most of my RNA were required for diagnostic and therapeutic purpose. So in that case, we do calculation in different type, different thermal, temperature conditions also, and we vary the salt concentrations also, and then we check the its effect on the stability of RNA. So if your project revolves, then only you have to change these settings, otherwise run in the default setting. Okay, so this right now we are doing for RNA. It will take few seconds or few minutes. Let it run. So this is the secondary structure what we have given the sequences. So out of that, they have given you the secondary structure. You can see the loop, the stem, and the bulges are formed here. So here you can see the sequence numbers also, like here 10. So this is the start. Here, this is a loop. Here, this is 20. So all these structure, the bulges and everything stem loops are formed. So this is the secondary structure. And as we know, uh, they are going to provide you the free energy also, the information about the delta G, the minus, uh, the more the energy values are in minus, the chances of stability are high. And if you want to download these files in different settings, then you can do this. So they have given you the best information right now for this RNA. So you can download and use this for your other analysis and for other tasks. If suppose you want to do for DNA purpose, then you just have to go to the fold. Instead of RNA, we just have to click on DNA and we have to provide our DNA sample this thing. You can type the sample name and run in the similar fashion. So based on that, you are going to get your secondary structure result. If you will compare your DNA and RNA structure, they will be different because as I mentioned in my past tutorials also, DNA are not capable of doing this unusual pairing. You know that A could pair with T and G can pair with C, but in case of RNA, they are capable of unusual pairing. And because of that, your RNA are capable of making different kind of secondary structure, stem loop, bulge, kissing loop, pseudonaut, quadruplexes, and all these things. And this is the reason one sequence can attain different structure. And based on that, they have diverse function. So I've already mentioned these things in my past tutorial also. So if you are new, you just have to get the ideas about the secondary structure overall thermodynamic value, you can see here the minus delta G is lesser than your RNA because we think that DNA is more stable than RNA, but in case of single standard DNA, 
your RNA attain complex structures which provide them the stability also. So you can check with the similar length of DNA and RNA, the delta G free energy values are different. Your RNA, the single standard RNA are more stable. So you can get these ideas from here and use these information for your different projects. I hope you have liked the session and found this video information relevant and insightful. If you have liked the session, I would request you to subscribe the channel and do share these information among your scientific endeavor. Thank you so much.